Well, I've got an existing site written in Nuxt 2 and this cookie consent component is a module that I've imported into that application. But now I want to move to Nuxt 3. What can I do with this module? How easy is that for me to import that? Can I just use it as it is in Nuxt 3 or what are my options there? Let's go and find out. Good morning, good afternoon and good evening, whenever it is that I find you and welcome along. So let's go and see if we can install this cookie control. So normally as it's a module, I can just go and npm install it. So let's go and give, uh, it's not that, is it? It's npm i nuxt cookie control and I've got the instructions for it over here so we need to go and add it into our modules so let's go and do that in our Nuxt config and in our default view we need cookie control component added let's save that is there anything else that we need to do cookie control that should be enough to get us up and running. So let's npm run dev. So it looks like we've got a few errors going on here. Uh, error compiling the template from Nuxt cookie control. Uh, cannot start Nuxt. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. That's not a good start, but with Nuxt 3, this is not an unfamiliar situation, unfortunately. So we need to go and have a look at what we can actually do about this to move this component across so that it does work on our Nuxt 3 application. So let's go and have a look. So let's stop this and let's wind this back and do it a different way. Let's get rid of that module out of there so that we've got a working application again. So let's go and have a little look at this component. So if I bring up the npm site for it just to show you my thought process around this so here you can actually go and see what what the repository is and that's this repository over here is in GitLab which is different for a change not on github but there we go so let's go and have a look at the anatomy of a module for Nuxt 2 and as you can see we've got um, a package JSON, a readme uh, we've got some locale files for different languages, which is interesting. And then pretty much it comes down to some view components, which are nothing more sinister than we would normally expect. So they're just standard template scripting and some CSS, although there's no CSS in this one. And then in the lib, there's the plugin .js which is a Nuxt plugin script file. And then there's the module that kind of pulls all of this stuff together. So there's some CSS here globally. Let's go and have a quick look at the plugin. So the plugin's got a global, what looks like a global object for this. So it doesn't seem too far away from what a normal or what we could normally achieve with Nuxt. We've got some components, we've got plugins, which we can do. So let's try and pull some of this into uh, the standard Nuxt application and see if we can get this working, these individual components. So the first thing we'll deal with is the styles. So on the left-hand side, I'm looking at my Nuxt 2 application and I'm inside the node modules and the Nuxt cookie control component. So if I go into the lib folder, that we just saw inside GitLab, then I can copy that styles across to my Nuxt app assets CSS. So let's just drag that across. And then back in VS Code, we can come over to the Nuxt config and inside our global CSS, we can add in a path to assets CSS styles.css and because it's SAS we also need to 
install the developer tools for SAS so that Nuxt is able to compile that down into native CSS for us. Okay, so that's the styles dealt with. So let's go and look at creating the plugin. So let's create a new folder called plugins. And in there, let's create a new file called cookie consent. And it's going to be a TypeScript file this time. And then we'll just put in the boilerplate stuff that we need to create a plugin for Nuxt. So we import define Nuxt plugin from somewhere in Nuxt. We will create ourselves our global cookies object that we are going to expose as our plugin object. And then we have a standard define Nuxt plugin, which takes the Nuxt context historically and it returns this provide object and when it does that that's the object that exposes itself across our Nuxt application so this will then be available as a this dot dollar cookies inside of any of our component code and so all we're doing at the moment is setting up a, a test property on that particular object and then exposing that across our Nuxt application so that will do us for that for now. Let's go and add a component called cookie consent dot view. And let's put some a template in there as we would do normally. And we're just going to show the value of whatever's in this cookies property or variable that we are going to define right now in our script so let's put some scripting in here and we're going to through the data method of view return a cookies object and it's going to be set to this dollar cookies so this is the the object that's exposed from our plugin code and then the last thing that we actually need to do is go and add that this cookie consent view into our template or into our application somewhere, but I'm going to put it in the template because that's where I want my cookie consent to live. So let's run that all up and see that everything is hooking up exactly as we would hope just while that is running up. So inside the cookie consent dot view, just to make sure the styles are working, I've given that a class of cookie control, which inside the style.css, there is a cookie control style that gives it a position of relative and a Z index of some huge number. So as long as we can see that in our code inside the browser, let's just save all those files. Come over here, refresh this. And we've got our cookie consent appearing down here with our property. So it shows that we're seeing the plugin. And if I go on the actual cookie control itself, we can see that it's got the style with the position and the Z index. So the styles are all being pulled in and applied. So that's pretty much the, the basic building blocks. We've got our view component talking to our plugin and with our styles plugged in. So. Now we need to go back and flesh some of this stuff out. OK, so let's work on our plugin. And let's go and add some types into that so we can get rid of that test property there. And let's build up some options. So we'll kind of do it in reverse order. So the cookies object itself is going to be of type cookie options and cookie options has the same properties that are detailed on the existing component so if i come over here and go to the the main page and look at the readme 
we'll see that inside of our Nuxt config, it details all here about the types of options. So you can specify whether there's CSS, whether you want a control button, etc., etc. So if I jump back over here, you can see that we we're starting to build up some of these actual properties ourselves. So whether or not the modal dialog is being shown at the moment, whether the cookie consent has actually been given or not, those sorts of properties. They extend off of the config options, and I'm not going to go through all of this in huge amounts of detail because it's not really about the cookie consent control, but these are the options now where you can see, have you got cookie control button? Do you want to see that? Do you want the CSS to be applied, etc.? So these are the options that get applied from our Nuxt config. And then these are the options that we have at runtime that we can use on our cookie plugin. So I'm going to go and define all the rest of these um, types just here, just so that we've got all of those inside of our plugin and everything resolves. So that's what I'm going to paste in here. So we get our cookie group descriptor, locale options, um, and then colors and things about iframes that I'm not interested in, but they're part of the existing component. So that's all I've done is defined all of those types so that they are what is going to be available on this particular cookies object that we're exposing across our application. And that's the way the existing plugin did it as well. So it's just a change there from the way it does it in Nux2 to the way that we're now doing it in Nux3 and doing it with TypeScript. So because of that, we can tighten up and help ourselves by using all the types. What we need to do next is right at the top of this file, add in a couple of extra imports. So I want to import the ref from view and I also want the runtime config because I need that to be able to get hold of the configuration values um, that you might put inside of your Nuxt config. So once I've got those, I can come down to where we're defining our plugin and inside where we define our plugin, I can use the runtime config to get at the public area. And then I'm going to look at it for a, an object called cookie consent. So over in Nuxt config, I'm expecting there to be a cookie consent object in here, which is where that's going to contain all of my properties for this particular plugin. And all I'm saying is that that's a, that can be a partial, so it doesn't have to contain all of the um, cookie options. It can contain just some of them. So that gives us an object that we can use for getting the configuration. Then what I'm actually going to do, because we're not actually creating the object here, so I'm going to create the actual cookie object and create that as a reference object. And inside of that object, we're going to have all of the default values that you might want. So these are the default values that we get from configuration. So if you don't specify some of these properties in the configuration, these are the values that you're going to have by default. And then we're going to have some other default values for the other properties that don't come from a config. So by default, we're going to initialize it not to show the dialogue. We're going to say that cookie consent is false by default and initialize all these arrays that are part of the component. We're then going to spread the cookie configuration after that so that all of those properties defaults get overwritten with anything that's been supplied from the cookie config. And I'm going to define underneath here the defaults for all of the color options that you can supply and then given that we've got those color options back where we're defining our main object the last thing we can do is set up a colors property that basically takes those defaults and then overrides them with anything that's coming from the configuration from the nux config so that gives us our 
main cookies object need to assign that to the actual value okay so over into our nuxt config let's go and put some properties into our cookie consent just so that we can see that they are properly used inside of our plugin so i'm going to override the control button to say i don't want the control button and i'm going to override the bar position to say it's bottom left and all of this is coming from the existing documentation so this is all the same stuff that you would have in nuxt 2 and we specify some necessary class level um, cookies and the actual cookies that they uh, create and that's so that we can show that in the dialogue that pops up and then just for fun I'm going to override a couple of the colors so that's given us some properties that we're going to override with so let's now run that up and see that that still runs and we haven't broken anything so over here we can see now that our properties has got a lot larger of what we're showing our control button has been correctly set to false and where is our bar position bar position is bottom left so we're seeing that we are actually overriding some of the default properties with the ones from our nuxt config so now what we need is some functionality in here which is what this is warning us about so we're missing the actual methods that go in here so if i go back to the type we've got some methods defined on cookie options that we haven't created yet so let's go and create those methods so after our cookies object let's paste in and then just have a quick spin through looks like a lot of code but i'm just copying and pasting all of this from the existing component plugin so it defines a, a methods object where all of these methods live what i need to do is down where we set up our object down in the nuxt plugin piece of code again underneath where we do that spread operator on cookie config i am going to spread on methods so that the methods get pulled in to our object as well now and let's see if that's got rid of our warning it has or our error on cookies so now it's happy that all of the methods that are defined on that definition are all inside of this object and then the last piece of code that that gets done in the existing component is before we do our return we have to call set consent method with true and true means it's initializing the component and then we have a hook and this is slightly different so i'm using the app mounted hook in nuxt 3 i can't remember what the what the hook is or how it, how it does this i think it's on app um well let's let's go and have a look over here in the plugin let's open this up and then right at the bottom here it does set consent true and it, it's doing a window on nuxt ready so we can use the the app mounted for that instead which is what we're doing so we call set consent there and one thing i haven't done which is going to complain about is up here in the imports i need to add in use nuxt app and if i just find where that's used so in the code there are a few places where historically because of the way that nuxt 2 plugins work you have the nuxt context available to you um, but we can use the composable now in nuxt 3 to do exactly the same thing so anywhere where you have the nuxt context you can just use nuxt app instead to get hold of that first create a context constant and then the rest of the code beyond that should work exactly as it did before so that should be our plugin all complete so let's switch over and 
turn our focus to the component code. So again, I'm not going to go through this in huge amounts of detail. In fact, the template hasn't changed at all. So I'm going to copy the template code from the existing component in exactly as it is. But let's concentrate a little bit more on the actual script code itself. So I'll paste in the, the revised script code and then talk you through the changes that I've made and things that you might need to do that might catch you out. So let's replace the script and then go back up to the top of the script code. So that was exactly there. Um, we set up these properties that are used inside the template. Computed hasn't changed. So this, this component uses another library called CSS vars pony fill. I don't really know or understand what that does, but we are going to need it. So let's go and npm install that so that we have that dependency met. And the other change or one of the other changes that, that I made is around the requires when you're trying to require a, an external library. So where is it? It's down, 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 down here. So before these were not import statements, they were require statements. So that's just another small change that you have to make to make things work with Nuxt 3 as opposed to Nuxt 2. And as you can see here, it's trying to reference a locale folder. And if you remember, we had a locale folder in our module. So it's going to reference that from our view component up one folder level and then a locale folder. So it's going to go up to basically our Nuxt app. So let's create a new folder in here called locale. I can probably just copy all of these. Just get rid of that and copy all of those into there. Right, good. So now we've got all of those, which is where all the text comes from. So it's all nicely translated into various different languages. And this is all part of the component. It pulls in the various locale uh, definitions that you're referencing inside of your configuration. So let's run this up again. And there we are. That's our cookie consent up and running. So we can go in and manage our cookies and we see the cookie value that we set up in our Nuxt config and all the buttons all work exactly the same. And if I come over to the application and if I do an accept all, then I see my cookies appear and my cookie consent disappears. So that all looks to be functioning as I would expect. Let's just go and try a few things out. So over in my default, let's try a locale equals Germany, for instance, and save that. If I come over, I've now got the German locale being loaded in correctly. So one of the benefits of doing this is that you've now extracted all of this out of a module into code that you are now responsible for. So historically, one of the things that this component did was to have a couple of methods in here that get called when the cookie consent gets accepted or declined. It seemed a bit strange to me to have that inside the Nuxt config, to have code inside a Nuxt config file. So I've actually changed the view component itself. Only, only minor, but just to emit two events. So when the cookies get accepted for each category and when they get declined, and just added in a couple of methods that get called at the point when you do actually accept so that's where it emits that and it emits the details about that particular group. So given that that's the case, I can come over here, get rid of that locale 
and do a cookies accepted and have that call a cookies accepted function that we'll create inside of our script. And that takes the cookie group that's been accepted. But for now, I'm not actually going to do anything other than output something into the log so that we can see that it does actually work. So let's save that and let's call it what we actually called it and save that. And then if I come over here, refresh this up, when I accept all the cookies, I get the cookies accepted being called and it passes me the actual cookie group that was accepted so I can get all of that information out of there. So that's just a small enhancement that I've made, but it does show you that it gives you that flexibility to make your own changes and enhance the component and make it better. So that is a potential option open to you. So that shows you how you can move a piece of code that you're using inside your Nuxt 2 application across to Nuxt 3. So it's not necessarily a showstopper if they haven't ported the module for you or upgraded it to Nuxt 3. Have some confidence. You can pull these things apart and bring them across into your own Nuxt 3 application. So hopefully you found that useful. And if you did, then please do like and subscribe to the channel because that really helps me out. And a big thank you to all of you who have subscribed already. It's really nice to see the channel growing. So let's keep moving on this. We're going to keep doing some Nuxt 3 stuff. And with that, I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.